This is before and after my miter saw dust collection upgrade. After countless hours and many failed attempts, I finally have near perfect dust collection that captures almost all the dust created and it works at all angles. Now this setup is made specifically for the DeWalt DW716, but you don't have to have this exact saw to employ this concept on your own machine. And if you do have this saw and you're interested, I will be making some of these available for purchase at inspirewoodcraft.com. Now it seems simple, but all this is is a piece of silicone mat cut to a very specific size and shape and held onto the saw with magnets. Many of the DeWalt saws have a metal bracket behind the blade and that's what makes this setup work. Your saw may or may not have this metal bracket or it could even be made of plastic. Two of the biggest problems with rear stock dust ports is that they aren't close enough to where the mess is actually made and they don't go low enough or wide enough to catch the dust in the first stage of the cut. This is most apparent on wide thin stock as the dust created originally gets flung at a very low angle and then gradually changes the deeper you get into the cut until it finally reaches the dust port. On taller stock, this isn't as big of an issue because the angle that the dust is being ejected at is already relatively in line with the dust port. But again, because the port is so far away, there isn't enough suction to collect any more than what is forced in and doesn't bounce out. One of the biggest issues on the DeWalt saws in particular is that the bracket for the return spring is almost directly in the way of the dust port. So using something rigid like a pipe to move the suction closer to the cut is all but impossible. That means we need something that flexes around that spring return when the saw closes but returns to its original shape when it opens back up. Now the first material that might come to mind is rubber shelf liner. It kind of works, but it's too lightweight. It leaves too big of an opening, which means it's more likely that offcuts will fly back and hit the back of the blade. And if you do manage to get proper suction, it's going to collapse, which poses its own new set of challenges. That's where the silicone mat really helps. At about two millimeters thick, it's the perfect balance between weight, flexibility, and rigidity. In its most basic form, all you really need is a rectangular piece of silicone long enough to make a U-shape that connects to both sides of the metal bracket with magnets and wide enough to get closer to the cut. The problem is you'll notice right away though is that it's quite bulky with a big open mouth that doesn't let offcuts pass through. It also doesn't provide a whole lot of suction. It's more like a ramp that helps guide some of the dust up. So to combat this, you can just cut a curve along one edge, leaving about two to four inches of square corner on the other long edge. This will work a lot better, but depending on your saw and the level of dust collection that you actually want, you may need to do quite a bit more tweaking from here. I've made so many small changes to this design that would be impossible for me to show each design change and the difference that it makes, but here's a couple of extra things to think about if you are going to try and design one of your own. The angle from the dust port to the blade needs to be as low as possible. Airflow doesn't like sharp corners and I've designed mine to be at as low of an angle as possible so that there is a smooth transition from the cut to the dust port. Another thing to think about is to look for any gaps where sawdust can escape. One of my earlier designs had two pieces because my original one piece design let dust escape through the top part. So I made a saddle to help keep that dust in, which worked okay, but not really good enough. So in the final design, the top portion actually has two tabs that overlap each other when they're installed, creating a full tube in that section. This new design captures almost all the dust from that area and increases the amount of vacuum at the mouth. Also, the biggest problem with every shop-made dust collection contraption that I've seen is that you can only use them for certain cuts, usually 90 degree cuts, and that's fine if you're only using your saw to make square cuts. But if you wanna be able to make a miter or a bevel cut, you're going to have to trim and cut somewhere along the way. And just a heads up, that might come at an overall performance decrease. The thing is though, miter saws are one of the hardest tools to keep dust free, and there hasn't been a system invented yet that has 100% dust control. Hopefully that helps you guys out and gives you a good starting point. Again, if you want to skip the trial and error and just have one show up in the mail, head over to inspirewoodcraft.com. We'll see you guys in the next video.